So let's let's go ahead and move on to uh, part two of our order of operations, which is setting up wise. So for this project, what we are going to be doing is adding footstep and weapon audio events to footstep animations, running animations, and um, attack animations in Unity. So knowing that, we know that we're going to need to set up wise with footstep events and uh, weapon events. So when I open up WISE, I'm going to uh, navigate, I'm going to click Open Other, and I'm going to navigate to the WISE project um, in my Warrior Princess Unity folder, which again is on my desktop. And I'm going to go into the WISE folder and open up Warrior Princess WISE. Now it's a completely new um, project. We haven't added anything to this yet. And uh, we're going to go back to our order of operations and in setting up wise the first thing that we're going to do is create our sound banks um, now this is the order that I like to work in I like to work from uh, sound banks to events to the audio tab however um, the way you work might be differently so the first thing I'm going to do is set up my sound bank and I am creating player footsteps for running animations and uh, one-handed or more-handed attack animation um, audio. So all of those are player animations. So for my sound bank, I'm going to create a bank and call it player. All right. So we know that uh, that's it. I've set up my sound bank. Um, that's all I need to do for now. And uh, that takes care of step one for setting up wise. Our next step is to create our events. So again, I like to work backwards starting with sound banks, uh, going to events, and we know that we are going to need um, footstep sounds, a uh, footstep event, and um, an attack event, at least one attack event. So let's go ahead and create a new event and we're going to call this footstep and I'm going to create another event and call it attack. All right. And so uh, the only thing we had to do was create our events in wise. It says here, create your events and we have done that. So there's nothing more to step two of setting up wise. Okay, create your sound effects. So this is where things get a little bit more complicated. Um, and so I go to the audio tab of the um, authoring tool here. And I know that I'm going to have to create some footstep audio. Now that means that we're going to have to set up a switch group with random containers. We're going to have to set up our switches because we're going to have different terrain normally. However, we're going to do a more simplified um, setup right now and we're just going to create some grass footsteps uh, that randomize between some um, grass footstep audio assets that we will be importing later. So let's go ahead and create a random container and we're just going to call this grass. Um, you know what, we'll call it we'll call it footstep underscore grass. There we go. Now we don't have any uh, footstep assets in here yet, so we're going to go ahead and need to we're going to need to um, import those grass footstep assets into our project. So stand by, um, I'm going to get those assets and put them on my desktop, and then um, we'll restart this video. So I went ahead and downloaded some audio assets that we can use for this video. And as you can see here, I created a folder called Audio Assets and put it next to all of the other folders that I'm using for this video. And here I have a Foley folder and a Footsteps uh, folder. And here are the grass footsteps that I'm going to be using uh, for my WISE project. So now that I have my assets, let's go ahead and um, import them into the random container that I have set up for my grass footsteps. So I'm going to right click on the random container and click on import audio files. 
and um, I'm going to click on add files and navigate to my desktop where I know my audio assets are. I'm going to navigate to footsteps and then to my grass footsteps. I'm going to shift click to select all of them. Click open and we can see here that they are listed as uh, the files that I will be importing into this random container. Click import and if I look inside of my random container they are listed here. Now um, this is pretty much all we have to do to set up our random container. Um, the default settings for the random type is uh, pretty much good to go once we set it up. We don't really have to do anything else and what I want to do is um, test this by going down here to the transport control and um, making sure that they play and randomize properly. Alright, so that sounds pretty good and I can test these individually as well. Now, so now we're going to move on to step four and connect our sound effects to our events. And the way that we do that is uh, down here in the event viewer, we can see our events. And it's very important to make sure that in your head you are separating what your event is from what your sound effects are. Um, a lot of people get these two mixed up where... Um, they they can't separate the idea of the objects like a random container or the sound effects here from the idea of the event. Remember the event is what is called by the game and the sound effects are simply um, what that event will do or not do. So in my event for example I could have it play, set switches, stop playing certain uh, sound effects and whatnot but the event is a container that will hold your sound effects and the event is what the game will trigger. So um, down here in the event viewer we see our event uh, we see our two events footstep and attack down here in our event viewer. So what we want to do is add our sound effects to the footstep event. So here under footstep we have this word missing in brackets and that means that it doesn't have any actions. Here in the footstep event editor uh, we have this window called event actions and it's not doing anything so we need to have it do something and what we want it to do is play one of our sound effects so we can we can do that like this by clicking on uh, sorry let me go back to our events and the event viewer and clicking on this double arrow and clicking play. So the action that this event, this box is going to do for us is it's going to play something. But we don't have an object for it to play. So we're going to go here to the audio tab. We want it to play our footstep grass random container. So now we have an action. Play footstep underscore grass every time we have footstep. So what I want to do is trigger the footstep event, not the footstep object, but the event. So when I do this, this is what we'll hear in game when the event footstep is called. Now assuming that's what we want to hear, and it is for the purposes of this video, um, we can ensure that that is going to be what plays when the game triggers this event. So um, we have completed step number four, connect your sound effects to your event. So our next step is to connect our event to our sound banks. There are two connections that need to be made in WISE, connecting sound effects objects to our events and connecting events to our sound banks. So now we need to connect our events to our sound banks. And we do that by, we can go in here to the sound banks tab, but that's not going to bring up the window that we need. We need to press F7, and that's going to bring up our sound banks manager. And the first thing we do is we 
in this default work unit, we want to expand it so that it shows our player sound bank. We're going to click on this box next to the default work unit, which automatically automatically connects the box, um, checks the box for our player sound bank. And then we're going to check our platforms and our languages. Now here in the hierarchy inclusion, there's nothing there, but that is where our events that are included in these banks show up. So this is very simple. We can either drag our events from footstep to our sound banks this way, and you'll see the icon under my mouse icon where there's a little arrow there indicating that that event will be added to that sound bank. Or, again, remember that our events always show up here in our event viewer, and we can drag our footstep event into the hierarchy inclusion or to the sound bank itself. So I'm just going to drag it into the hierarchy inclusion, and now that we see when I select my player sound bank, the footstep event is included in the inclusion window. So once we've done that, we have now connected our event to our sound bank which takes care of step number five for our setting up wise order of operations. Our last step is to save and generate our sound banks. Anytime that we make a change here in wise, anytime we add an event, a sound effects, an object, anything, anything we do, we must save our project and we must generate our sound banks. Because Unity looks at the sound banks which holds the event, and if those sound banks are not updated with the latest information, then Unity won't know that we've changed anything in WISE. Unity gets all of its information from the sound banks um, that we create in WISE. So in here we can see uh, under the Create a tab it says yes and yes. That means that we have created some new um, objects. We've made some changes. It means that changes have been made. Wise knows that, sound banks know that, and now Unity knows that. So now that we have saved and generated, um, we can complete our setup of Wise and move on to our next order of operations, which is part one of setting up Unity. Before we do that, though, I want to go back into Unity and we can confirm that our changes have indeed been updated in Unity by going to the Wise Picker tab and expanding our Warrior Princess project. Now we should see under events the hierarchy, that the same hierarchy that we see in WISE. So here under our events folder we see our default work unit and we see our attack event and our footstep event. And we will note that this will directly mirror our folder setup in WISE. So under the events tab we have our events folder, default work, work unit, attack, and footstep events. We will also see our player sound bank under sound banks. So in this way we know that uh, Unity has indeed updated with the additions that we made in WISE, but I want to warn you that anytime you save a change in WISE um, it will update in Unity and you'll see it here even if you don't generate sound banks, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it will work. You have to generate sound banks in order for this to um, update correctly.